Hi everyone, on the higher time frame, I'm looking for this A, B, C expanded flat, where I believe that wave C, this five wave move, is not yet finished in this yellow B before we can then expect a move to the downside in wave C. So the reason for that is that if we look at the waves, then this being one, two, three, four, five, some people have wave five at the high over here, the high that we recently made a few days ago. However, looking at the local price action, which we will do in a few seconds, it doesn't really feel good to me. Besides the fact as well that if we take a fib time from the low of two to the high of three, then the one to one over here is at the 3rd of March and very often wave 4 is longer than the 1 to 1 of its respective impulse which in this case is wave 3. So I would like wave 4 to basically end after the 1 to 1 so basically after the 3rd of March. Now the question then is on the lower time frame are we going down like we do now and hitting this target before potentially a wave 5 because of course no one knows what price might do we just can create expectations and probabilities or will price go up once more take the highs and then move down to four so in order to uh, figure that one out i will show you my preferred and alternative scenario on the lower time frame one more thing i like to mention though is that as you can see wave c if this is an a b c wave c so far with the wicks that we have here at the highs did not hit its rare wave C target, which is in between the 1.38 and the 1.618 trend-based FIB extension. And you create this uh, area by going from clicking on the trend-based FIB extension, taking it from the low of A to the high over here, to then the low of basically this B wave. And then you click and then you put on the 1.38 and the 1.618 and there you go. So that is the rare target for a wave C followed by this white box here being the most common target for a wave C. And as you can see, we're far off the common target, right? And this is the common target, which is also in between the 1.618 trend based FIB extension and the 1.618 Fibonacci that you pull so these, uh, this fifth pull, you pull it from the high over here to the low over here. So basically this internal count is an A, B, and then wave C ends and somewhere there. So yeah, that is the most common target. As you can see, we haven't hit it yet. We haven't hit the rare, the rare wave C target yet, which of course is quite odd in Elliott wave times that we wouldn't even hit the rare wave C target. The only requirement that we did pass is that we take took the highs, uh, the previous highs of wave A. So if this is then A, B, and this is C, we did take the highs of A. However, I would like to see wave C moving further to the upside and at least hit the rare wave C target or even the common one. And I believe that with this scenario, that is possible. So this being a, then an expanded flat ending wave four over here before then moving to the upside. I think that would be pretty brilliant and it would also bait a lot of people in potentially thinking, hey, we're now going down more downside because some people have wave five over here expecting a correction, more downside to come, but then it only retraces to the 3A205 before moving up. So people will be like, yo, wave two is, uh, you know, wave two is finished. We're in a wave three, very bullish because then they think this is a one, two, three, four, five, which is then one big wave one, then a wave two, and then people might think this is a wave three, which of course is another alternative scenario. But then if this is a wave C, we would stop here somewhere around 30K and move down. And it would also be a very, very nice backtest of the 30K area because you can see how much support we had over the past few years as well as having a range here. So I think we never backtested the 30K area as well. So it just would be brilliant. Uh, that said, so yeah, let's... Um, Let's go to the lower time frames and actually show you my lower time frame scenarios and then how it fits in this bigger scenario. So if I turn everything off, um, as well as actually the box that I have over here, turn that one off, we go to the lower time frame and I will start with the scenario that I have on my chart in the past couple of videos, which is this one. So locally we had this range and it is quite difficult 
to figure out what was happening here the past couple of days, especially on the 20th of Feb and the 21st of Feb over here. Many people were thinking about, yo, what can this actually be? Now, in my opinion, uh, and this is my preferred scenario, this can be some sort of a WXY or a, uh, so a WXY exit, as you can see right now, or a WXY. Both scenarios work for me. Both are in that case preferred scenarios. The targets don't really change as well. Um, so yeah, both of these work. And what you will notice as well is that both of these are bullish, but I will go into that in a second. So first the WXY with a zigzag here, X, Y, X, Z. And then we have this ABC with a very nice triangle here in the B, which also gives away, by the way, the, the fact that we have a triangle guys is really, really important. If you see a triangle, the one thing you should always think is, is this a wave four? Is this a wave B? Is this a wave X? Is this a wave Y in a WXY? Or is this a wave Z in a WXY XZ? Because a triangle can only exist in these positions. Now, when I look at this triangle, I can say confidently, yeah, this doesn't look like a wave four to me, like one, two, three, and then a very long four, it just doesn't work. So I think, hey, this is probably gonna be a B with then this being the A leg, B leg, C leg, which then also gives you a hint of, hey, if this is then a three wave move, we can expect some more downside or a upside after this three wave move, either correcting a bit of the three wave move or with the scenario that I just explained on a higher time frame, we go up to take these highs before moving down and take wave four or finish wave four. So this is a scenario that I've been looking at for the past couple of days. And if we look at the local price section, we got a little bit of like more information. And I do like to highlight the comment of Mr. Hussein Madi here. Um, also, guys, if you have recommendations, tips, if you see something on the chart that I missed, just put it in the comments. You know, I, I really, really respect your time and also your recommendations. And Hussein said here, hey there, note the wick on Coinbase, but not the same as on Binance. So I actually was checking on other charts and here I have the, uh, the Bybit chart. And he is absolutely correct where on the Bybit chart, this wick over here is not as long as on Binance. On Binance, we wicked below the 1.38 Fibonacci, uh, which is this orange line. But over here, as you can see, with the new wick, we actually wicked below the wick before. But on the Coinbase chart, look how long this wick is in comparison, right? And we didn't wick below it with this potential, as you can see, end of wave five. So what I have done on the lower time frame is the following uh, with the information that we got is that this can be a one, two, three, four, and then a five ending diagonal. The reason that then this is a wave four is an expanded flat. And I think it's better to show that on um, the buy bit chart. So an expanded flat where you have wave A followed by a wave B followed then by an impulsive wave C that takes the high of A. So this actually works pretty nicely. Um, of course, this is on the 15 minute. I don't go into the, I, I don't really like to go into very, very, very low time frames for Elliott wave counting, but this works. And then followed by a five wave move to the downside, which then can be an ending diagonal type of move where we have wave one, which then is a uh, one, two, three, four, five, followed by a three wave two. Then we have a one, two, three, four, five in the three, followed by a four, and then followed by a one, two, three, four, five in the five. And that would then make this a one, two, three, four, five, which would be a very nice ending diagonal. And looking like I just got up as well, as you can see, it's almost 7 a.m. in the morning. This looks like a little bit of an impulsive move, which can be a, the nice start of a one, two, three, four, five. And then maybe during the day we go down a bit to backtest uh, or well, basically retrace this impulse. I wouldn't mind. And if we put on the target box, I do have a target box over here. Let me actually remove the one that we, so we found support over here on this target box, which I turn white after it's been tested. I turn it white, but let's remove that one now. As you can see, I do have another target box here, which has a daily naked point of control, time naked point of control, uh, the 0 0.5, as well as the range 
there we go, the, uh, the range value area low, which can be quite an interesting area for potentially, if this is a wave one, we can backtest for a wave two and then find more upside. Because in general, with this scenario, I am looking for more upside. So the, bu the bullish and the bearish scenarios, right? Let's, let's go through it. So I have two bullish ones. This is the first one where it perfectly matches wave four on a higher time frame, not yet being ended. So then wave three is over here at this high and actually I can put this on as well. So we have wave three over here. Then we have an A, a B and a C to finish wave four. And then eventually we go up for five and down for C, right? However, if this is an A, B, C in the four, that means that wave B needs to be a three wave structure. But at the moment it is not because this is an impulsive wave, which then has to be an A wave followed by a corrective move, which then is this B wave, followed then by another move to the upside. And that is when you get a one, two, three move, right? So I am looking, and that's why this scenario is more bullish, I'm looking for upside. And that is my preferred scenario. Of course, guys, the alternative scenario is going down. And the moment we take the lows over here at about 21.4K, the moment we take these lows, this whole scenario is invalidated. So with, with Elliott Waves, we always need a bullish and a bearish scenario. We need to know our invalidations. And that is the invalidation of this scenario. But my current preferred scenario is that we would go up one more time. So that being said, this could be the beginning of a nice move to the upside. Um, and I would like to take these highs, preferably getting into this area between 26.3 and 25.9 before then seeing downside so on the lower time frame i would like to see upside where this w x y x z is finished and then eventually we go up in another whatever corrective move it will be so my other scenario is a w x y which uh, is very very similar targets are very very similar it's just a little bit less uh, jiggle wiggle basically because it's not a w x y x z uh, it's just a w x y what i like about this scenario though is that um the one to one which i actually have to zoom in a little bit so over here you see a trend-based fib extension you see the one to one right this white line and as you can see it has been very, very well respected. So I'm talking about this line over here. It's been very, very well respected. Only a couple of wicks, but that's about it. Now that trade, uh, uh, that uh, ba -ba -ba, trend based FIB extension, what a name it is eh, actually. So that trade, uh, trend based FIB extension, sorry, I'm messing up now, is uh, the extension from the high of X to then was it, this? I think it was this, which one did I took? Maybe the low over here to the high here. I forgot which one I, yes. So from the high to the low to the high over here. Now, honestly, it's a bit weird to pull it from the high to this low to then this high. Uh, the reason is that I believe this is an expanded flat. So then this would be some sort of corrective structure followed by an expanded flat followed by another three wave move corrective structure. Um, and if I pull a trend-based FIB extension from the high here to the low here to the high, then this move has to be the corrective structure. But this is a five-wave type of move, which then would it make sense. So actually, looking at it, this trend-based FIB extension, it looks very nice, but I actually don't like it. What I do like is that the better target for a wave Y is these two lines. And these two lines... Um, are the 1.38 and the 1.236 Fibonacci, which is in general for Elliott Wave, a very important area. So we have wave W, we have wave X, we have wave Y. And wave X and wave Y, as well as, well, W is the first one, but each wave follows each other up between the 7.86 and the 1.38 Fibonacci retracement. And in this case, we can see that if we pull the Fib from the low of wave W to the high of wave X, we get, uh, uh, well, the maximum target for wave Y is then the 1.38 Fib. But this area in general is just so well respected. And as you can see now as well, over here with potentially the end of this wave 5, we wicked into this area and now are finding some sort of a little bit of an impulsive move, which I think would be very, very nice. So this is my other scenario, which at the, you know, it's exactly the same, looking for more upside and down, downside. My bearish scenario, well, 
I don't really have a bearish scenario because I really struggle to find a scenario that is going to take these lows at the moment. The reason for that is because we took the high over here. So this high that was made, we took it on the 21st of Feb. And if that is the case, we cannot be in an impulse because wave two is not allowed to take the highs of the start of wave one. But that is actually that's what happened. So that means that this is some sort of a corrective structure. And if you really want to move to the downside, you tend to actually want to see some sort of an impulsive move to the downside. But this is a very correcting overlapping structure, which to me hints a little bit like, yeah, I don't think this move up is finished just yet. Uh, but of course, if there is a scenario, um, I will let you guys know. And do not forget, I'm not 100% bullish because you always have probabilities that these lows can be taken, that both of my current preferred scenarios is going to be invalidated and that we just move to the downside. It is always there. It's always a probability. However, based on probabilities, I currently prefer seeing upside. Um, so yeah, that is uh, what I wanted to say in this video. This is what I'm looking for on the local time frame, as well as then on the higher time frame, of course. And uh, yeah, we will see what price is going to uh, give us today. At 1 p.m. today, I will share another video, another update uh, for you. And also, I want to say thanks for uh, the 100 subs. I really, really appreciate all of you guys' support. Um, and I'm thinking of maybe doing some sort of a Q&A. So if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comment section and I will uh, write these down so I can make a video for you guys uh, with uh, some more information about maybe myself, my trading, my analysis and how I studied it and whatever it is. So that being said, thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a great Sunday. Have a good morning. Have a good afternoon. Have a good evening from wherever you are in the world. And I hope to see you at 1 p.m. for my new video, 1 p.m. CET. Bye bye.